Hey everyone, I'm sure that many of you have watched my 3D graphing calculator in Minecraft video. If you haven't, I highly recommend watching it. Anyways, many people seem to be interested in how I made it, so here's a video explaining everything. For the sake of the video, I'll only go into how the actual graphing works and not the interface. So first, the range must be set. Simple enough, starting from the center, an area effect cloud of duration 2,147,483,647 ticks is spawned, and its X and Z scores are set accordingly. After that, the area effect cloud spawns 4 more area effect clouds in each direction, which all do the same thing. New area effect clouds will only be spawned on top of redstone blocks that do not already have an area effect cloud on it. Doing this recursively eventually will cover the entire range. Pressing the start button will give every er area effect cloud in the range a not graph tag. And starting from the center, we select the closest area effect cloud with the not graph tag. An area effect cloud named Mathboy will start at this block, and spawn more area effect clouds as it passes through. These area effect clouds will have appro appropriate tags based on what they do. While doing so, the area effect cloud will keep in track of how deep it is inside the bracket and give a score to the spawned area effect clouds. This will come in handy later when performing the operations in order. Each area effect cloud on top of a constant will kill an area effect cloud directly on its right, starting from the right. This makes sure that there is only one area effect cloud per constant. Then we check for which area effect clouds are deepest in the bracket. Out of these, we do these operations in order. First, trigonometric functions, then logarithms, absolute value, root, exponential, divide and multiply, and addition and subtraction. The order that a trigonometric Logarithm, absolute values, and roots are computed do not matter because they are all standalone functions that do stuff inside them. The rest are following PEDMAS order. Division and multiplication have the same priority as well as addition and subtraction. So let's look at addition which takes two values. All functions that take two values use the function maths slash setmems to copy the scoreboard values to each constant in the scoreboard objective calculations under the fake players T1 and T2. The reason we do this is because fake players are less expensive to reference, as well as because a math library that uses T1 and T2 can be made separately. Once the values are set, we call the math library I made. The function for addition is under math slash addition. Simple enough to add T1 and T2 together, we set result to T1 and add T2 to result. Then we copy result onto the left area effect cloud, then kill the right and operation area effect cloud. Subtraction works very similarly, except after setting the result to T1, T2 is subtracted. Multiplication and division are strange, however, because scoreboards only use integers, all calculations use a fixed point system. This means that numbers such as 45 are actually 0 0.45, and, and 1500 is 15.00. Adding and subtracting does not cause problems in the system, but because these two numbers are increased by a factor of 100, the result must be changed by a factor of 100 as well. For example, 1.00 times 1.00 would be treated as 100 times 100, which is 10,000. The number we would need is 100, which is 1.00. 10,000 would have to be divided by 100 for that. For division, the number would have to be multiplied by 100 instead. Okay, so next is exponentation, which was one of the most painful things to program. First, temp1 and temp2 is set to t2. Then temp2 is divided by 100 and multiplied by 100. Subtracting that by temp1 would yield 0 if t2 was an integer, and uh, any other number if it was not an integer. In hindsight, I probably could have just modulated the number, but whatever. Uh, if t2 is a negative number, we set reciprocal value to 1 and change t2 to positive. If the number was found to be an integer, we can just multiply the base uh, exponent times, which is, you know, just repeated multiplication, so we can just use the multiplication <coughs> uh, library. However, if the number is not an integer, we cry, and yeah. Alright, so using this formula here, we set temp2 to t2, then we get the natural log of t1. Then we set t1 to the result of that, and then t2 back to temp2, because uh, temp2 was cleared in getting of the log. Then we multiply t1 and t2 together using math slash multiplication. We get the result, then we raise Euler's number, e, to the power of this new number. There are many ways to calculate this, but many of them did not work in Minecraft well, so I had to make my own thing. In other words, my grade 11 math knowledge isn't very useful in looking for approximation formulas, so I just reverted back to like grade 6 math. Uh, so, uh, math has this nice property where if you multiply a number to the power of x and number to the power of y, you get that number 
to the power of x plus y. Using this knowledge, we can separate e to the power of a big number into e to the power of a small number times e to the power of a smaller number, yada yada yada. So we have e to the power of t1. We divide t1 into chunks of 5 until we are left with this small bit. We count the amount of chunks we made, then multiply e to the power of 5 that many times. Then for that bit, a binary search is performed to get an accurate result where e, to re e is raised to that number. For those unaware, uh, binary search is just a method that you can use to search things without going through a whole list. I think, I'm just making it up as I- Anyways, now that we have a value, if the reciprocal value is set to 1, we divide 1 by this value, and then we're done. Uh, I mentioned logarithms before, logarithms use a similar method, except that it uses the property log a plus log b is equal to log a times b. I'm gonna leave you to figure that one out. Uh, roots just use the exponential functions, but using the property where root x base y is just x to the power of 1 over y. I had initially used Newton's algorithm for finding roots, but found that using the exponential function was way more accurate. Uh, you should still be able to find the remnants of it in my code, I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, absolute value just checks for if the number is negative and multiplies by negative 1. For trigonometric functions, an area effect cloud is spawned at 0, 0, then it is rotated to match the given value. Then teleported one block forward using slash teleport at s caret 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 1. Then the area effect clouds x and z value are grabbed for sine and a cosine. For tangent, the sine value is just simply divided by the cosine value. In hindsight, because data get is pretty expensive, I probably should have just used Barkov's first uh, sine approximation formula or something. Well, but but anyways, uh, that should be the entire math library complete. Uh, back to solving that thing. When we finish that operation, uh, in the addition example, we left a single constant in its place. When a constant is alone in a bracket, its bracket depth value will decrease by 1 and we will remove the brackets around it. Then we choose the next operation to perform based on the factors mentioned before. If we recursively do this, we should eventually end up with a single constant, which will be the result. Then the area effect cloud we were executing off of will spawn another area effect cloud, which then it changes its own y value to the result, plus 65, uh, because everything's offset from the ground, and then places a block there. Based on the decimals of the value, a custom modeled block with differing offsets uh, will be placed. Smooth blocks mode will just spawn a falling block instead, and uh, it's much more simple. And that's pretty much it. Here's a few places I could up improve upon if I were to make version 2. So first of all, as I mentioned before, the trigonometric functions aren't terribly efficient, because Minecraft's data get is pretty expensive. and. I could fix it using the formula I just mentioned above. And another thing is that there are a lot of entities that go into this map and there are a lot of at E selectors. Those are pretty expensive so uh, a better way to do this would have been create a whole entire memory thing out of scoreboard fake players and then just load everything onto there and then just hard code everything. So basically like more work for me but it would be faster. Well, that's all for today. Uh, thank you, and see ya? I don't know. Bye.